What's up, YouTube? This is Zerko, and today we're back for some mining and some crafting. Now, if you can see, we still got a little bit of a problem here in terms of we don't have a roof. Now, we got a bunch of smooth stone for it, so I suggest that we fix that problem real quick. <laughs> Well, that was pretty quick, huh? And it's starting to look like a real little home here. It's too bad that we're only going to be here for, uh, I don't know, maybe half a dozen more episodes. All right, so the main topic of today's video is going to be building up a little bit of starter infrastructure. Now, there's going to be a couple of things that you're going to need to have in order to get started and get to the point where you can really build a bigger base that's going to have all the things that you need. So let me go to sleep and we will start talking about those things. I also noticed that my house is an absolute death trap inside because I never put up any lighting. So we'll get to that today too. So one of the first things you're going to want to collect is a whole bunch of this sugar cane here. Now, this stuff is super easy to find. Just go along the coastlines here, and you'll find plenty of it. Now, these are something that you might want to grab early on as well if you're in a taiga biome. Sweet berries are great for trading, and if you can get a little infrastructure built up, it'll really pay off. Now, to harvest these, you can either right-click on them, which is just going to take the berries off, but you can see if you step into it, it's still going to hurt you. But, you can just break it if it's out in the wild, and I mean, there's not much uh, detriment to doing that, and you'll end up not hurting yourself. So, either way, it's up to you. Now, kelp is going to be one of those things that, if it's not easily accessible right next to your base, you're definitely going to want to grab some. However, in our case, we're right on a little peninsula. And I don't think kelp is going to be too hard to grab, so we'll leave it for now. Oh, but look there. Something nice to explore, and I'm already rolling. Let's go see. There's a drown. Two drown. Maybe just one. Nope, there is two. We're going to have to go up for air. Let's go up. Oh, we're going to get hurt once. There we go. Ooh, I wish I had Silk Touch to pick up that Sea Lantern. This is how it always is, though, when you come to check out something cool in the ocean. You pretty much just have to fight drowns over and over again, and you can never actually see the thing. But, let's take a look. He Where was that? Just here it is. And Respiration 3. That is wonderful. And we're dying. Oh, my lungs. Well, that was pretty good. I, uh, I say that was a success. We are back at home real quick because I forgot to bring a bed. So, it's a good teachable moment. Whenever you're going to be out and about, collecting things or adventuring, make sure you have a bed. Now, I don't think we have any more wool, so we'll have to take this bed. So, you remember how we killed the wandering trader earlier? Yeah, that was so that we could get these leads, because this is way better than a piece of wheat. And we got one sheep. We need one more sheep and two more cows. So we ventured out to uh, get this cow in the back of our boat and look what we found. 
an ocean monument. That makes up for the lack of cows and having to uh, journey all the way out here to find Betsy here. But uh, I already got a screenshot of it, so I know the coordinates, and we will definitely be coming back to that. Looks like we also found a sunken ship. Stay there, Betsy. I'm going to go investigate. And we don't have a door on us, but there is a door right here. That'll be helpful. And it looks like we got some paper, a clock, I guess that's all right. And the buried treasure map. That's what everyone comes here for. That is definitely Chris Vanishing. Aqua Affinity, that's pretty good. But the buried treasure map is definitely what everyone wants out of here. The potatoes are going to serve us well as well because I have not yet found a village. So don't have any source of potatoes. And uh, that makes for a very good food in the early game. Bunch of emeralds. A little bit of iron. And some lapis. That's always good. And I'm dying again. I always die when I go into water. Swim! Why won't you swim? Oh no, I'm hungry! They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. When you're not really fine, but you just can't well, get into it because they would never understand. We're gonna go have to find... Oh, and I had the bed on me. We're gonna go have to find Betsy and that ship and get all of our stuff back. So first, let's find our house. Oh, look, now we find a whole bunch of sheep. Of course. Isn't that always how it works? Let's just take a screenshot of that. And uh, we'll come back for you guys later. We found a nice little doggo friend on our journey. Unfortunately, we don't have any bones to give to him right now. But uh, we'll get a little doggo friend at some point here in the near future. Oh, there's the house. I can see it. I can almost smell it. Good thing we keep a backup boat just for these types of situations. Now, pro tip. Keep a backup boat just for these types of situations. <laughs> Betsy! I came back for you, Betsy. Well, I mostly came back for my stuff, but... We'll say that it's all about Betsy. It'll make her feel better. She'll produce better milk if she's more comfortable. Well, that was an ordeal. I nearly died again trying to get the rest of my stuff back. It was very rude of that ship to do that. But this is a teachable moment as well. So in the early game, you're going to die. It's almost inevitable. That's why so many people have a hard time playing hardcore. And that's why when someone does succeed in hardcore, it's a pretty big achievement. Because in the early game, you just, you don't have any real means to stay alive. So, if you die in the early game, don't feel too bad about it. If there's monsters all over your roof and you can't go to sleep, don't feel too bad about it. And, uh, you know, just uh, go back, get your stuff. That's why it's so important to take down coordinates, you know? And, uh... Go on with your day. So we woke up, came out, and there was a creeper on the roof. So you gotta be careful how you take care of these guys. The best strategy is to hit them and then back up, hit them and back up over and over till they die. It's the only. Oh, there's two creepers on the roof! Two creepers on the roof. It's a new musical written, directed, and performed by yours truly. Uh, tickets, oh, oh gosh, tickets go on sale this fall, oh man, gonna have to fill in this hole. More creepers. It's a death trap out here, and uh, I think we're gonna have to do something about this roof. It's just not working out. I'm a little spider climbing up the wall. Getting smacked down, string for all. 
that's uh it's the opening the opening uh song for creeper on the roof two creepers on the roof written and directed and performed by zerko all right let's get some revenge you can't handle this pro strat boy oh yeah gunpowder all around all day long just gunpowder just just making it rain gunpowder all right so the first little bit of infrastructure that we can get set up is planting some of these guys down these are going to help us for a food source and we can stock up for a bigger farm later when we have a villager trading hall and it's just going to be good all around so if you put them in little rows like this they're pretty easy to collect safely but you can really do it however you want um, you could put them all like too wide and then just go around them like that but it's really dealer's choice when it comes to sweet berries. So I figured that I had wheat seeds, right? And I looked and I got three. So that's definitely not going to cut it for a little farm starter. So we're going to have to go chop some grass like that. So I will be right back when I get that done. Circo's semi-professional grass mowing company coming to a server near you Look at who we found Bert and Bert and Betsy's son Carl and uh, They are most definitely coming back with me. Oh But I can only fit one of them in the boat at a time That's going to potentially be a problem well, we'll figure this out. Well, it looks like I can just uh, kind of row the boat and uh, they'll keep up for the most part. So that's convenient. Betsy, I found your husband and your child. Mm. Look, here they are. Look, you don't, mm. you, you're not even you're not even looking at them. That is your family, Betsy. I can't even believe you right now. Don't look at me. I don't even want to speak to you anymore. Oh, look at the little happy family. Bert, Betsy, and little Carl. Gotta put one there just to make sure that they don't escape because now they're my prisoners forever. All right, so now that we have our cows and we have one sheep, we're gonna need to get another one, but it's time to make a way to produce them, if you will. And we're going to do that by means of a little wheat farm. And it's going to go somewhere. I haven't really thought about that part yet. But uh, anyways, we need to sleep. And uh, I'll show you how to build a little wheat farm that is just mwah, perfect. All right, are you ready for this super complex, convoluted farm design? Here's what you need. One bucket, one hoe, one trapdoor, and however many seeds you bothered to collect. Get your bucket, fill it up, make a hole, put the water in the hole. Now, water will irrigate farmland for up to four blocks on in any direction. And here's the crazy thing, is you would think that that would then go like this, right? However, that's not the case. It actually makes a complete square, and all of this farmland will get irrigated. So, all you really need is one water source, and you can make a pretty huge area of farm. Now for everyone out there that's thinking, oh, I love this wheat and the farmland and all that, but when I go to harvest it, 
I just keep falling in this water hole. Well, do I have the solution for you? Call today and you can order one trap door free of charge. And uh, yeah, so you put this trap door at the top of the water block and it gets waterlogged. So the water is still there. It's still going to irrigate the farmland, but no more falling in the hole. And that's all you're really going to need until you start to automate things anyways, which obviously we are not doing here because in my mind, automation is one of those things that kind of signifies that you are going to be staying at a place for a longer period of time. And that is definitely not our intention with our little micro home here. So we got ourselves some sweet berries. We got ourselves a wheat farm. We got some cows. We will get one more sheep. I'll probably do that between episodes. And there is one last thing that we need to do in this episode. Can anybody guess what it is? I died for it. I almost died for it twice. That's right, folks. The buried treasure map. And it is close. It is so close. So we are most definitely going to go grab that. All right, so it looks like we are here at our buried treasure location. Unfortunately, it's under the water, but if we press F3 and G, we'll see we're standing right on top of the X and the buried treasure is always going to be in this chunk. So um, there is a trick that I'm not sure if it works anymore. But it used to be if you stood, if you look where it says chunk on the left, it used to be that, oh geez, there's a drowned. But if you stood in the spot that says 9-9 nine, nine of the chunk, then you would always find it. Oh, and I'm hungry. Hungry drowning is going to kill me so many times in this series, I can already feel it. So let's go ahead and eat. We'll try this one more time. Can't wait to breed up those cows and uh, not have to uh, rely on these sweet berries. All right, so this, it should be right under this block here. And yep, it is. And diamonds. That's, that's a good find. And the heart of the sea. Such a useful thing. And oh man, I almost just died. Let's get in the boat. Eat our sweet berries. Should hide those chunk borders. And let's go home. Alright, so there was one more thing that we forgot to do here. And that is make our sugarcane farm. Our little manually harvested sugarcane farm. So... The best way to do that, in my opinion, is to dig out not like that. This is the right one. Um, but to dig out these little trenches, and there's going to be two blocks in between each little trench here. So that way you can um, fit two rows here, and it actually takes up a little less space for the same amount of sugarcane but uh yeah and then you are going to just fill this in with water and the way that we're going to do that is we're going to make an infinite water source by putting a bucket on this block and then a bucket on this block and then you can just grab from this block move two blocks down all you need is one bucket and it's as easy as that Now, once we got our water in, we can go ahead and throw our sugarcane down. And so, if someone ever tells you that sugarcane goes faster on sand, well, they might be trying to look out for you. Don't believe them. Because uh, that myth has been around 
for some of you, maybe longer than you've been born. <laughs> and uh, it's just not true. It's uh, That myth was first told, I don't even know, when Sugar Cane first came out which was a long time ago, like 2011, 2012. Um, it was pretty much one of the very first things that came with Minecraft as we know it after it changed from Minecraft Classic, which, now those were the days, Minecraft Classic. But, yeah. So that myth has always been around that sugar cane, sugar cane grows faster on sand than it does on dirt. But it's sadly just not true. It grows at the same same speed, no matter which one you plant it on. But with that, I think that's all we're going to have time for today, ladies and gentlemen. So I would love to bid you farewell, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did, comment down below, and subscribe if you want to see more Minecraft. All right. See ya!